Hey everyone, welcome back to MNMM Miles. This is Manmohit. Now guys, in today's video, I am going to create another video with another five most important and most repeated essays of all time. So even if you're giving your IELTS general exam or even if you're giving your IELTS academic exam, these essays will apply to you because we know the task two is similar for both the academic and the general type of the exams. So do watch this video until the end. I would be giving you those five essays which have been repeating a lot of times. Plus I would be giving you some ideas for them as to these are the ideas that you can use. If you also end up getting the same essays in the exam, you can copy the same ones. You can create your own. That's perfectly fine. But at least you can understand with this video as to how can you think of something new and unique, something that works, something that is relevant to the essay topics on the spot in the real exam. So without wasting any further ado, let's dive right into it. Okay, so top five most repeated essays with the ideas. Now the first one I have got here is what technologies did you use to help you in your studies? Describe how it has helped you. Use specific reasons and details as in examples to support your answer. So what they're asking from us is when we used to study, what sort of technologies were we using or what did you actually use to help you in your studies and we are not just going to name those technologies we're also going to describe as to how that helped you so we have to explain that that's one part plus we have to give a, a specific reason as to okay this is why it actually helped you and details to support your answer so basically they're asking you to explain your answer plus also giving some examples at the same time now the moment I see this question and the moment you see this question, you should start relating it with your real life and think about what exactly helped you during your studies, right? So that's the easiest way to generate the ideas in the exam. You don't have to be very fancy or anything. You just have to be natural. Those ideas may make sense, may not make sense. They may be factually correct. They may not be factually correct. That does not matter. What examiner wants to see from you is your level of English plus how much control do you have over the English language when you type or write your answer. So technologies that helped you in your studies. The very first thing that comes in my mind is I can just talk about my laptop because that's also a technology, a gadget that helped me. So first I'm just going to name what sort of technologies help me now because it's plural. So I just cannot just rely upon one. I need to give at least two. I can give more than that, but at least needs to be two. So laptop is one thing I can talk about. Another thing I can say is my iPad or any tablet that you have. Or another thing you can talk about is uh, some video platforms. For example, YouTube's, uh, your YouTube, uh, Vimeo, all those video uh, based, like the videos based platforms you can talk about. Any other technology you can say, maybe your recording device. And the list goes on and on and on, like literally anything and everything in terms of technology that actually helped you, you can put it over here. So this is just naming those technologies. Now we need to describe how it helped you. What I can say is laptop is one of the technology that helped me in my studies because whenever I had to think of something or whenever I had to do my homework, I always used to open up my laptop, browse the internet, go to Google or reddit or any other websites and derive other people's opinions and information from there and those information pieces used to help me in creating my own thing and it used to help me in my homework or my day-to-day -day studies that i used to do or you can just say if whenever i had to type any sort of essays or assignments that were given to me as a task I used to type that down in the Microsoft Word in my laptop. So it became extremely easy for me to type down my essays, create a PDF out of it, and then submit it for review. So it used to save me a lot of time, energy, and I used to be really efficient. You can just name a couple of other softwares as well. So this is how you can say laptop used to help you. Also, you can say I used to take laptop to my university lectures and I used to turn on the recording in my laptop, which used to help me to record the lectures. And then whenever I feel like I need to revise what happened in the lecture, I used to play those recordings back. So I've got access to that recording 24 hours, seven days a week. So it used to help me in listening to the same lecture again. And then I can get some more main points out of the lecture that was 
done by the professor. So that is what you can explain. So I also give specific reason. I also give an example that when I go to my lectures, I take my laptops with me. So everything and anything you can cover in your laptops. And then if you want, you can talk about iPad. So iPad helps me in my day to day study that whenever I study and I need to take some notes on the PowerPoint slides or on the Excel spreadsheet, I can just take my Apple pencil, Apple pencil, or if you use a Samsung, I used to take my S pen and I used to take notes right away. I used to just scribble something on the top, which helped me in saving the environment by saving the paper. Plus at the same time, I can change the color of the pen to any color in the world. And then I can have different like fonts. I can have different colors. I can highlight few things. It saves me a lot of time. If I have to sign any PDF, I don't have to print the page and sign it. I can just bring up the PDF in my iPad and I can just sign that page right in the iPad itself. It saves me a lot of money. It saves me time. It saves me to travel to different places to get the printout. All those things can be done. And in example, you can just say that last year I had to uh, print a PDF and sign it because of so and so reason. But instead of going somewhere and printing it out and spending money and time, I just brought that PDF onto my iPad, signed it, sent it, and it job was done within five minutes. So I just described the first th two things that came in my mind. Whatever technology comes in your mind, you can just explain about that. Next essay I have is, should the government support artists such as musicians, writers, and painters? Is it economically beneficial or is it just a waste of money? Why or why not? So if you support it, you have to explain as to why. If you do not support it, you have to explain why not. So we're not just going to give our opinion. We have to explain and stand by our opinion by giving some examples and explanation. So should the government support artists such as musicians, writers and painters? My answer would be absolutely yes. Some of you may say, no, that's perfectly fine, but you have to support it by giving why not. What I can do is I can say, yes, the government should support artists such as musicians, writers, and painters. It is economically beneficial because it at the very beginning may seem like it is an expense, but when those musicians, writers, and painters get so much better at their work, develop their skill, and they actually start making money, for example, musicians, when they travel different countries to perform in the concerts or stage shows or release their music, it helps that country economically a lot. Why? Because they are still the resident and citizens of those countries. So they still are going to pay taxes on whatever income they would be generating. And hence it at the beginning may would have may have seemed like an expense, but it also at the same time turned it into an investment because then they are paying it back to the same country. So this is, I supported this, plus I gave my reason. Okay, so this is one thing. Now, because it says or, so you don't have to explain the both sides. You don't have to say in one paragraph that it's worth the investment and in the second paragraph you say it is also a waste of money. You can just support it in both of the paragraphs or you can just be against it both of the paragraphs that is absolutely fine second idea you can say is yes it is yes the government should support them it is economically beneficial because once they start producing money and once they kind of let's say you know have the concerts in their own country people from different countries also travel to different countries to just attend the concerts or sometimes writers are having an exhibition painters have got their let's say a museum or an, an art place where they have displayed their arts. So people from different countries visit to just look at those places, be part of that experience. And in turn, it increases their people coming into the country. So it increases their overseas expense, overseas uh, money that is coming in. So this is another idea that you can say in your second paragraph or maybe in the first paragraph, it just increases the excursion. So that would be your two ideas or you can, if you are against it, you can just give two ideas against it. Next essay I have is movies and TV shows are a good way to study history despite their lack of historical accuracy at times. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Again, it is asking us for our opinion. So I can either, I can either agree or I can either disagree. That's completely upon me. My bet would be that I 
can say it is yes indeed a good idea to study history in movies and tv shows people feel bored when they have to read books on history because they are not that interesting so some people prefer to know about something visually like for example if i talk about myself i am a person who learns visually like if i have to learn something i'll rather go on youtube and watch a video on that rather than just reading an article because that is who i am right so in that case i can say people who do not even like history or who feel bored of reading books they can watch the movies and tv shows and they can get the same level of information and knowledge and wisdom from the movies and tv shows which are actually adapted from the real books of history and then they get interested in that because they would be enacted by their favorite actor or actress it may be enacted in a way that is very intriguing to watch so you can just list something like this that yes it is a good idea to have movies and tv shows not all of them there are certain movies and tv shows which are just based on fantasy so may so they, those may not rely like you know be relevant to you but the actual movies and tv shows which have been taken directly from the books and they are the true replica of what happens in there are the best examples to actually watch that in terms of example you can just mention any book like it doesn't even have to be factually correct you can just say uh, the book which is based on uh, the william shakespeare book which was turned into a movie the shakespeare's movie so if anyone watches that movie they can get a, a good understanding of who william shakespeare was what he did what he wrote his history all of the things would be th uh, were there in the movie which when i watched it was very intriguing plus i got to know about him completely without even reading anything and that was very interesting to watch or whatever other name you want to give that's completely fine but you can create examples from your own from your own side that is completely perfect they are not going to reduce your marks based on if the information was correct or not next is in some parts of the world traditional festivals and celebrations have disappeared or are disappearing or are just becoming extinct why is this happening so that's my first question i have to state the reason and secondly what measures could be taken to ensure they do not disappear so we're looking for a solution right so traditional festival you can just talk about something like let's say uh if i talk about diwali right or if i talk about you can just think of any other festival like diwali just came as a very first one in some parts of the world traditional festivals and celebrations have disappeared or are disappearing now i won't say diwali celebration has disappeared i can just say it is disappearing it's not as wide as compared to what it used to be why the reason i can simply say it, it's because of social media and nowadays the younger generation they are more inclined towards not being social with each other they just prefer staying at home on their devices on their gaming consoles on their phones all the time on their ipads all the time so they have become less and less socially interactive because of that even on these cultural festivals they just prefer being at home just eating or drinking not going out not spending time with others and just being with themselves so that could be one of the main reason it is slowly disappearing people do not prefer to be outside nowadays now we need to give a solution what can be done it all starts in the family so parents need to step up their game and limit the social media and device time to their kids and they have to just make sure that the kids go out on these special occasions and at a very young and tender age parents have to put this belief in their kids that these festivals are not just an optional thing it is a mandatory thing to be part of the society to be part of the culture and make sure to be social as much as possible yes i'm not saying just take away their devices and all no limit that to a way that everything is balanced out so this is one solution that can provide in this so in one paragraph you can explain as to why and in another paragraph you can just give a solution for that one now last but not the least i have got is as the number of cars increases more money has to be spent on road systems which is true the more number of cars the roads get damaged a lot quicker as compared to if there were less cars so more money has to be spent on the road systems to maintain them some people think the government should pay for this 
Others, however, think that drivers should cover the costs. Discuss both views. So that's a question. We have to cover both views. We just can't. Now we can support one. That's completely fine. But we have to discuss both of them in, do, in two separate paragraphs. And also give your own opinion. So you discuss one, you discuss the other, and then you give your own opinion. You just can't say, I think both are correct. No, you have to be in support of one. You have to be against one. Okay. Now, some people say governments, some people say the drivers themselves. Look, I am of a opinion that it should be government. It's more, it should be government's responsibility. Simple reason for that is, yes, drivers have to be responsible enough that, you know, they drive safe, they drive at a speed limit. They're not just speeding, doing all those burnouts, which damage the roads quickly, all those kind of things. But at the same time, I also need to understand that because every single person who's driving, they're paying taxes, right? They're paying so much taxes to the government, especially the people who are driving long, uh, like long drives and all. They pay toll tax every few kilometers and all that stuff. So because they're paying so much tax to the government, government's responsibility in return is to make sure that whatever tax they are collecting, it is not just going in their own pockets like so many politicians do. No, it is actually going back to maintain the roads, make them better, make them more stronger just so that they can last longer. So in my one paragraph, I can say, so that would be my opinion. In the first paragraph, when I say government should pay for this, yes, I can say yes, government should pay for this because they're the same example, because they're taking so much taxes, people are paying toll taxes, government should spend that money back, invest that money back in making the roads stronger and much better so that they can last longer. In the second paragraph, I can say drivers should also cover some of the costs if they are at fault. If a driver is caught speeding, or if a driver is doing burnouts and actually intentionally damaging the roads, in that case, the driver should be at fault and should be liable to pay for the damage that he had actually done for the roads because he was at fault. So this is another thing that I can say in my second paragraph, but in my opinion, I can simply say, government should be liable to pay for maintaining the roads because they are taking a lot of tax, they are charging a lot of toll tax, so it should be their responsibility to not keep the money with them, but to actually invest that money back to make the roads better and stronger and safer for everyone. So these were the five essays that I actually had to cover and give you a bit of an idea. Like I said, you, you, you can copy the exact same ideas. That's completely fine. If you end up getting the same essays, if you do not get the very same essays, that's, that's fine. At least this video will help you to understand how can you think something on the spot? It's very easy to relate everything with you because that's the best way to do it. I hope this video was helpful. If you have got any sort of questions or if you want to make, or if you want us to make any sort of videos, any topics which you're struggling with on an earlier basis, you can put them down in the comment section below and we can make those videos prior to the ones that we have got planned every single week. All the best if you have got your exams coming soon. Stay safe wherever you are and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.